Hey, what's up guys? Tobin here, 5M Family Homestead Channel. Today, we're gonna to be doing a, a video that's a little bit different than a lot of our recent videos have been. If you're new to our channel, you may not know it. We own a part-time taxidermy business and we do European mounts. Uh, we do several hundred each year and it's a seasonal uh, part-time business that, that we've grown from uh, just me starting out doing my own European mounts and then doing some for friends and then it's turned into a, a pretty uh, pretty big little part-time business. So if you go way back on our channel, I, I did a lot of uh, taxidermy related videos about a year or two ago. I, I definitely am not gonna do uh, as many as I did back then, but we are gonna, I'm, I'm gonna put a few in and as we get into hunting season, uh, you know, when we do vlog videos and stuff, you're gonna see us in the shop working and stuff. And I'm gonna try to go by, go through uh, step by step as we go, and explain to y'all what I'm doing and, and and what I'm using to do it. This can be done by anybody. Uh, I've got heads hanging on my wall that are a decade old that I've done this process on, and they're still perfectly fine hanging on the wall. Uh, it can be done by anybody uh, if, if you make a small investment. Um, up front to get the things you need. Uh, you can do this on your own and save yourself you know, money from a taxidermist. I, I encourage you to use a taxidermist if you don't have the time or the resources uh, and support your local uh, taxidermist. But uh, by all means, if you're a do-it-yourself person, uh, this method will work and it's proven. Anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. We uh, really appreciate everybody that's uh, joined us here lately and uh, really enjoy interacting with y'all. I hope that you guys uh, enjoy this video. I forgot to mention what we're doing the European mount on. So this is an axis deer a guy brought to me. So this is an axis deer. It's a, it's a smaller axis deer. It uh, doesn't have big 32, 33 inch horns like some of them do. This method can will work on any antlered animal from a elk. Um, we did several elk and red stag last year, all the way down to a whitetail mule deer, um, anything in between. For a horned animal, like a pronghorn, or a black buck antelope or something like that, the process is a little different. And I've actually got an antelope coming in here in the next week or two. We may make another video on that, but um, this method will work on any any antlered animal. Let me turn the camera around here and uh, show y'all what you're gonna need to get started. All right, guys, so the small things you're gonna need is gloves. Uh, these are like reusable gloves. You know, you can buy just a cheap package of the, like these vinyl gloves at Walmart. They're kind of hard to find with everything that's going on now. A roll of tape. This is plastic wrap that you use for like packing. I bought it at Walmart and I cut the, the handle off of it. Pliers, a sharp knife. This is a Havilon uh, blade on a uh, taxidermy handle. Lighter. Also a, a these two things right here are not um, vital to have but they will make your job a lot easier these long needle nose pliers and these forceps uh, I got them on Amazon just a screwdriver and a drill with a large drill bit doesn't really matter what size um, but you know, you know on the, a larger end will work then you're gonna need a you don't have to have a power washer but it's gonna make the job much quicker you could also take it to a car wash once you get to the point uh, when it's time to power wash it, but that's gonna make the job much quicker. Then you're gonna need a burner, um, any of these type right here will do, and then a pot. That pot right there, a lot of guys will do their heads in uh, like the turkey fryer pots. There's nothing wrong with that, but you're just boiling a lot of water uh, that you don't have to boil. Uh, so this pot right here, I bought it at Walmart for 15, 20 bucks. Um, that's a little bit bigger one um, that there are some smaller ones that will still work I'm using this one because uh, this axe steer the head on it's a little bit bigger than a whitetail So but that um, you know, you can get picked that up at, a, at any you know Walmart or any store like that And then you're obviously you're gonna need a propane bottle for your for your burners. I forgot to mention earlier this head I skinned it yesterday. Uh, it takes me about five or six minutes to skin a, a, any kind of deer head that, that may add some to your time but so if I if I skin a deer head and I can't get to it right away. I usually just put it in a bucket of water, which is what this one's doing now. You know, including skinning and everything, uh, you, you can do this in a few hours, you know, three or four hours. So I do, when I skin the heads, all I do is take the skin off. If there's any portion of the neck, I take that off. And then I also take off the bottom jaw and I leave everything else on there. The eyeballs, the extra skin, all that stuff. Leave it on there. Um, it The time it takes you 
the labor wise to cut it all off, it doesn't save you any more time uh, really when you're boiling it. This soap right here is what I use, but any kind of clear soap for the most part will work. Probably use for one head, maybe a half to a quarter of a bottle. It will degrease, it'll pull all the grease and the fat out from the bone um, while you're boiling it. So we got the head out there boiling, came in here in the shop because it's so loud, uh, those jet burners uh, can't hear me. I hope you can hear me now. I'm gonna let that head come to a complete boil. I'm gonna try to keep it somewhere between, once it does, keep it somewhere between a simmer and a rolling boil. I don't want it to be, it, it, I definitely don't want to simmer it. I want it to be boiling. And I think this is uh, one area where a lot of people waste a ton of time. I've watched videos and read stories and read stuff on hunting forums of guys that simmer ahead for like eight or 10 hours, which is just crazy. I want it to boil. It, it, and there's a, lot of, there's a lot of people that say you can't do that, it'll damage the bone. I, I completely disagree. Um, I've done thousands of heads like that and never had one damage. Now, I will tell you this, if you're doing one on a very small deer, like a, like a spike, um, a young deer, not, a small, not necessarily a small deer, but a, a young deer, you do want to be careful because uh, it can damage the bone on a younger deer. But anything from like a four corn up, roll and boil, and I'm going to keep it there probably somewhere around the neighborhood. If I'm just doing one head in a pot like this, uh, somewhere around 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, now, if you were to boil it for hours, then, uh, you know, roll and boil for hours, um, it would, you know, it could cause damage. But uh, for 20 to 30 minutes, uh, basically what we're trying to do is cook all that meat that's on there and loosen it up so we can get it off of the power washer. Uh, and speaking of power washer, that's another area where a lot of people waste a ton of time. Uh, if you had access to borrow one or to buy one, um, I would highly recommend doing that. It's going to save you a significant amount of time. Um, if you're if you're just boiling the head, all the the meat that's behind the head where the where the neck attaches to the back of the head, there's a lot of stuff in there that if you don't have a power washer, you're going to pick it out with like a little pick or, or you know like with pliers. And I've seen people do all kinds of stuff with the power washer. You just hit it with the power washer and it's going to come out of there. Uh, so those are two things that definitely are going to save you a ton of time. So now once it starts boiling, what I'm going to look for is uh, a lot of times uh, the skin on the forehead, like right across the forehead, uh, will split. A couple other things like that, uh, the skin along, like above the, uh, the jawline, uh, start splitting there. That's what I'm looking for. When it starts to get to that point, um, you know, it's probably time to take it out and power wash it. And if, if it's not quite done yet, if, you, if the stuff's not coming off easy, you can always put it back in and then wait a little while and do it again. So. So we'll, uh, we're gonna let this boil for a while, and then once it gets to that point, we'll pull it out and show you. you guys, it's gonna be hard to hear when I take y'all out there, but I'm gonna take you out and show you kind of where I keep it at when I'm boiling. Who's that pretty lady? Aw, you're sweet. Where you been? Uh, with the teenager shopping. Fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And a lot of sass. <laughs> what have you been doing? Working with dead animals. Sexy. About right there is where I will keep it for the next probably 20 to 30 minutes. All right, guys. So this uh, head has boiled for probably probably a good 30 minutes, and as you can see, the all the skin on the forehead right there has started to separate, and that means it's time to power wash it. So All right, so I have removed probably 95% of the meat from this uh, axis deer. The long needle nose pliers I had, I'm gonna use those to stick up in this no nasal cavity. I'm gonna remove all that tissue in there. The forceps that I showed you will be used to go inside the brain cavity and pull out the rest of the brain. Then, These two little, I don't know if these are like ear, it's something with the ear, the ear canal, but these little bulbs right here, I'm gonna pop those two out 
and then I'm going to take the drill bit and drill a hole behind each one of them to give me more access in there to power wash. And then I'm going to hit it with the power washer again once I do all that. So we're going to do that right now. All right, so I cleaned out the, the nose nasal canal uh, with the pair of needle nose pliers. Uh, I turned the head over, uh, knocked out those nodules in the back uh, by where the ear canal is, drilled the hole out, pulled out all the brain tissue, and this skull now is, and then I hit it with the power washer again, and this skull now, it has probably 99.5% of the um, flesh removed from it. So, and then going into the whitening process, which is what we'll be doing next, uh, that's fine. If there's a little bit of uh, meat left on there, we're gonna run it through peroxide to whiten it. I really didn't talk about that earlier, but um, and I'll, I'll show you the peroxide uh, here in a minute, but uh, that peroxide is gonna loosen up anything that's left on there. So you don't sweat if there's just a little bit of stuff left. Um, it's all gonna come off when we whiten it. So I'm gonna turn the camera around here and show you all what it looks like now, then we'll go from there. All right, so that is what it looks like. It's clean bone. Pretty white already. You know, you could probably honestly put this skull on the wall like it is now, but we're gonna get it a lot whiter. All the tissue in the nasal cavity is, or most of it's gone. I knocked these nodules out and drilled holes in there and got down inside that brain cavity and everything, you know, almost everything in there is gone. All this little bit of flesh that's left around here, that's all gonna come off when we whiten it, so don't sweat at that. Um, just make sure with your power washer that you're squirting around the teeth real good. Any little hole, any little spot. Um, these little holes right here, hit those really good with the power washer. And we're going to hit them again when we whiten it. Let me show you all why you don't need a, ha a, a, a Sawzall to take the back of a head off. That right there. Somebody got a little carried away with a Sawzall. They hit it right here. They came all the way right there. It didn't, it's not going to hurt anything, but all you need is a sharp knife to remove that neck from the back of the head. Uh, if they'd have gone much farther, it could have been could have been bad. So, all right, everybody. Full disclosure: <laughs> we have we're trying to sell some of our chickens. We've got 15 chickens here on the homestead. When this whole uh, situation that's going on right now happened, we kind of got a, we bought a few more chickens, and I think we overshot how many we needed. We decided to sell five of them. We have 15. We decided to sell four or five of them. Uh, some good friends of ours that lived down the road uh, decided to come buy them, uh, buy two of them, and they came over right uh, while I was in while that head was boiling. Bought the chickens, and then we sat and talked for like two hours. So it kind of uh, threw off my timeline for getting uh, the head done today. So we're going to come back tomorrow, and we're going to whiten the head tomorrow, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, but I'm, I, I can tell you up to this point, I've got probably an hour into the head. It took me 10 minutes to skin it, boiled it for 30, to, you know, probably took 10 minutes for it to start boiling, and then boiled it for 30 minutes, so that's 40, 50 minutes, and another 10 minutes of power washing it. So we're you know, at an hour um, on it right now. My point being uh, for saying that is just uh, that this is a process that is very quick. Tomorrow we'll come back, uh, I'll show you the peroxide we use and we'll whiten it. We'll probably have another 30 minutes to an hour in it tomorrow and we'll have it finished up, have a finished product. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. Well, good morning everybody, we're back. Uh, so let's talk about whitening a deer head. Uh, just like before, this whitening method will work on any animal. Um, I do this on uh, whitetails, um, exotics, um, antlered or horned uh, on a horned animal. Obviously I remove the horns before I uh, use this method on them. I even do it on uh, pigs. Um, in fact, I've got a few pigs I'm working on that I'm gonna be doing it on today as well. <clears throat> so uh, first let me show you what we whiten with. That's what I use. Um, I buy this at the local beauty supply store. It is 20 volume liquid peroxide. Um, so 20 volume doesn't mean 20%. Uh, the way I understand it, it it's more like 8% 8, 8 maybe. Uh, so I'm sure somebody can tell me the exact amount. I use this non-diluted. In the pot that I uh, was boiling in, uh, like I said, it's a little bit bigger. I have a few that are smaller. It's probably gonna take two or three of these. And I reuse this stuff. I put it back in a five gallon bucket uh, that I have a, a special lid for that screws on. 
So after I use it, I put it back in that bucket and uh, use it over and over and over again. You probably do 20 heads with it uh, or, or, or maybe more. That's what we use, that's how we do it. It works great. Uh, what I do is put it in the pot, uh, bring it up to a boil, and then I try to keep it just below a boil. I don't let it go to a boil. So like it's kind of like a simmer, just below a simmer. And I keep it there for five or 10 minutes and I kind of pull it out and check it. This part's kind of hard to, to give you an exact way to know when it's ready. Um, but I will say if you do leave it in there too long, it will damage it. The bone actually kind of will get brittle. It can kind of come apart. So always err on the side of caution. With heating it up, it speeds the process up significantly. So even if you just get it to right at simmering and then kill it and take it out, you're still gonna get much wider than it is now. So before we get started, the antlers on this uh, axis deer, we have to protect them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap the bases of the antlers with this plastic wrap. We're gonna go about 10, 15 wraps real tight. And then you can use, I use electrical tape, you can use masking tape, you can use all, all, all kinds of different tape to hold it in place. Sometimes it'll even stay in place on its own, you don't even need anything. But I typically put something on there just to, to hold it in place. So we're gonna wrap the bases, tape them up, uh, put them in a pot, and pour the peroxide in there and get them going. Another thing, uh, don't breathe that peroxide, the, the fumes from it when it's boiling and coming out of there. I've, I've done that for years, it's probably not good. Uh, so try to you know stay away from you know being right over that pot when it's boiling. Uh, even a little crosswood or something would help move it away. So but let's get into it. So this axis deer came to right at a bull. I turned it off. I was actually down taking care of the animals and it, it went a little bit long, but it didn't hurt anything. It's sitting in the pot now. I'm gonna take it out and show you what it looks like. So all we're gonna do now is we're gonna hit it one more time with the power washer and get off any remaining tissue. We're gonna try to get in every hole that you see and make sure water shoots through that hole so there's no meat or anything inside there. And then we're gonna cut the heat shrink off of the horns and let it dry and it will be done. So uh, let's go out here and show you. So that head will continue to get wider as it dries, but you can tell it's pretty white right now. This plastic shrink wrap is just to keep the, to protect the antlers. So now we're gonna, you can see little pieces of flesh just here and there in the back there there's a few pieces we're just going to hit that with a power washer really good knock all that off there and then let it dry so let's go turn the power washer on Alright guys, a couple things to keep in mind. 
uh, when you're shooting with that power washer, you want to stay away from this area right here. This is real brittle nose cavity. You see there's a little bit missing there. Um, it's not quite as uh, much on that side. I won't do anything with that. I'm going to let it dry and give it back to the customer just like that. Most people, I would say almost all people, have no issues with that at all. You can also see that part of the nose came off. That's not uncommon for that to happen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, that piece just fits right back in there like a puzzle. Just like that. I'm going to let it dry like that. And it will probably dry and I won't even have to glue it back. But if it's still a little loose after it dries, I'll uh, hit it with some uh, super glue. As you can see, there's a little bit of discoloration at the bases of the antlers right here. After this completely dries, I'll show you all how I touch that up uh, super easy. So this, this head is essentially done other than the touch-ups. Now once it dries, you can see there's maybe a little piece of uh, meat here and there, like a tiny little piece there. There's probably a few tiny pieces in the back here and there. What I do with those once it dries, I take a little, little pick like that, and I'll just go in there and knock that stuff out and once it dries it'll come it'll come right off uh, so we'll do that so that, that'll be kind of part of the touch-up part of it so if you're keeping score we're at about you know an hour and 30 minutes probably on this head that we have into it uh, we're gonna let it dry and go do other stuff and then come back to it in a few hours once it dries and then we'll uh you know we'll probably spend another 10 or 15 minutes on it and it will be done so we'll see you all in a minute Alrighty. so this head has been drying for about 30 minutes it's not still not completely dry it will continue to dry for the next day or two it's best to dry it in the sun if you can it, it will dry much faster in the sun and it gets wider in the sun if not i put it underneath a fan in my shop so time to color up this this little bit of discoloration right here a lot of people probably wouldn't even worry about that that's your choice but what i do is i order this this is a wood finish stain marker and it's provincial dark oak will work too uh, pretty much any color will work and all i do is now if you get this on the on the skull it's not going to come off so you got to be careful i'm trying to do this so i can video it but i'll just kind of go through like that and then take a paper towel Kind of come back and I'll kind of blend it in and it's good as new. Kind of go around, <clears throat> go around the whole thing and do that wherever it's needed and that will be it. All right, everybody. Well, we are finished up. I hope I covered everything uh, that needs to be done as far as uh, just the process. Definitely, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I would be happy to help you if, if, I, if I missed something or didn't, or didn't explain something right. Um, I want to make sure I get everybody the, the information they need. So, uh, but I also want to encourage everybody if, if you're the uh, do-it-yourself type of guy and you have the time, this is definitely something that's not not super hard to do. It's not a very big investment, and uh, you know you might even enjoy doing it. Uh, especially you know if you shoot a couple deer each year or something, uh, it can save you a little bit of money. So, like I said earlier, I do encourage you. You know, for us here on our homestead at our house, doing this taxidermy stuff, we we, we try to do it in about a four or five month window so it doesn't take the whole year and during that time we're pretty busy but it's a it, um, it's a blessing to us we really enjoy doing it we really enjoy meeting people the relationships we made we also enjoy the extra income and it allows us to do things uh, so you know I do encourage you if, if, if there is somebody in your area uh, that does just skull mounts or taxidermy in general you know if you don't have time or don't want to mess with it definitely take it to them and uh, uh, they can help you out um, if you're anywhere in the North Texas area, uh, Southern Oklahoma, hit, you know, hit us up on YouTube on this video in the comments and we'll uh, tell you how to get a hold of us and uh, we'd be happy to help you out. So if you haven't already, please subscribe. I uh, hope everybody has a great hunting season. I'll see y'all again.